To begin improving our wall slide, we first want to account for the vertical kind of floatiness that we get uh, when we lower the gravity scale here whilst going up a wall. This can be done very simply with some branch check just ahead of our gravity scale being set. So when we're going up a wall or when we are entering the wall slide as we have here from our true state, we first want to include a new branch check, which will allow us to see or check on the velocity that the player is currently moving. With our velocity value, we can then split the structure pin. And then from the branch, we can pull from here. We'll do a less than or equal check and we want to check that our Z velocity is less than or equal to zero, meaning that we've reached that jumping peak. So we now have no upward vertical movement remaining. And just this one change will immediately make this feel much better. So we can see here that as soon as I press jump, as soon as we hit the wall, there's no change in gravity until we start going down and then it slows us down. It kind of gives us that feeling of having the friction taking place and slowing our descent against the wall. There are a couple of other things now introduced. Uh, the problems with this system are becoming apparent, so we're going to go through and fix these as well. Now, the first thing I like to do is also clamp the horizontal movement. So we're going to also reduce, because at the moment you can slide around on the wall quite a lot sideways. We'll reduce this by directly setting the velocity under these certain circumstances. To keep things a little bit tidier, I'll do this from a sequence node. Because what I want to do here a little bit later is we're going to immediately cut the upwards velocity when we hit the wall as well. Because I think generally that's going to feel a little bit more sticky and the, it's just a, an approach that I like to take. So we'll come back to the then pin zero a little bit later. What we'll do to begin is from the second pin, this is just where we'll be controlling our velocity. To do this, we'll need our character movement. So we can grab this one here and we'll set the velocity through this. As this is a vector, we want to do this through a vinterp, and we'll use a vinterp2. So this will just give us a nice kind of transition from our current velocity to our final resting velocity that we want to set this to. Vinterp works that it can take a dynamic input, so something which is changing. So we'll get our current velocity and plug that in. And then the target, we can split this one down. And what we want to do is we'll get, rather than splitting this, we'll just duplicate our get velocity pin. We can then split the structure pin here. And our end goal is we want these to be zero, but we want to maintain the Z velocity. So we'll plug that in here, which means we're going to interpolate from our current velocity on all of the axes, keeping the Z axis as it is, and then interpolating down to a zero speed on the horizontal movement. This takes in a delta time so we can get our get world delta seconds. And then this will take an interpolation speed. So we can try a value. Uh, let's start with something quite low. So I'll set this to four. We can find a value that feels pretty good. And then we'll probably want to promote this to a variable as we've done in the past for easily uh, being able to update this. So four kind of feels okay here. If we double this, then we'll get a good idea of what this value is doing now. So we can see that one doesn't slow us down quite as quickly. So I think maybe somewhere in between that is going to feel quite good. And we can, as I've said, promote this to a variable. We'll call this one wall slide deceleration. And just to note that the way that this works, so the interp speed, we can see that if this is set to zero, then it just jumps to that end goal, which gives us the information that we need that the lower the value is, the quicker this interpolation will happen. The higher the value, obviously this is going to take longer to ease into that final resting state. The next thing which is now more evident when we're trying to do this moving across the wall is that as we're moving side to side and we're adding rotation we can see that this is being overridden and we can kind of rotate away from the wall even though we're still sliding on it. What we'll do to fix this is we're going to come after this pin and we will just directly set the rotation whilst we're connected to a wall. Using the set act rotation node, I'll split this because again, we only want to affect the Z axis or the yule of our rotation. And what we want this to be is some information that we can get from our hit output information. Specifically, we want this hit normal, which is the direction or the normal in which we're facing from the wall. We're going to make a rotator from the X vector. Again, we're only interested in that one Z axis, so we can split the structure pin. By default, this is going to give us the exact direction the wall is facing. So if we do a quick test here, 
uh, if we just plug this in first of all and do a quick test then this will make us rotate the same way that the, the wall is facing once it gets to that stage so we can see we don't want that to happen uh, what we want to do instead knowing that information we can add a float value here uh, we're going to add 180 being the degree offset that we want to apply and we'll plug this value into the rotation i'll just add a reroute node here to keep this a little bit tidier uh, there's not a whole lot we can do to keep the blueprints that tidy in this case apart from promoting this to a variable which we might come back and do later and you can now see that that is rotating the correct way when we hit a wall and even when we're adding the horizontal offset i think just to keep things a little bit easier to read i'm going to move this straight back and we'll do our gravity offset here uh, we're only going to want to do that after this second pin has taken effect uh, as we go through and add the next part of logic so what i want to do up here is i'm going to run this off of a do once um, because we only want to pause our velocity vertically uh, for that kind of sticky feeling as soon as we hit the wall once and we'll reset this a little bit later so we'll get a do once pin we're going to get or set the character movement velocity again again we'll split the structure pin as we'll only need some of the information here and we're going to set this so we have a split velocity we're going to need this again so i'll just duplicate this above and what we're going to do kind of the reverse of this interpolation uh, this time we want to keep that initial velocity as we hit the wall on the x and the y this time we're just going to directly set the z velocity so this is going to give us that immediate stop of going up which means this will be hit much sooner which means some of the rotation issues that you just saw as well whilst playing should also be fixed now before going back in i'm just going to make a third wall and make this one a little bit longer for testing the horizontal movement now that was getting a little bit difficult and there you go you can see that feels immediately much better just with that kind of initial stop being applied now we do want this to be reset at the moment we can only do this once the very first time we hit a wall so what i'll do is i'll move this across a little bit we're going to create a new custom event which can be called here just to cut down on the wires going absolutely everywhere in this event graph i'll name this one wall slide velocity reset we'll plug this into the reset execution pin and basically what we're tracking down here when we leave the wall so whenever this has been uh, detected that we have detached from a wall we want this to be called again so as we can see there that now means that it's not just going to be that first time that we hit a wall that this will happen every time that we detach and jump back onto a wall we're still getting that initial velocity being uh, set to zero and then we're doing our lerping or interpolation to the value that we want a little bit later after watching that a few times i think maybe a slightly higher speed i think eight did feel about right here i'm going to set that back up to eight and one other thing has just caught my eye as i was going through the code here and that is that we're setting these to hard values for the gravity and in fact just this one so it's similar to the problem that we faced with the movement speed a little bit earlier if we set this which we will be doing a bit later the gravity value to anything other than one then we're going to be setting this back to an incorrect value we can get the gravity scale and just promote this to another variable we'll name this one default gravity and we'll hook this up the only change we'll need to make is we'll come back down here we'll control drag in the default gravity and plug that into the reset value that we have here so now whenever we change this when we come back to improve our character movement we'll have not just the gravity set back to one we'll have that set back to our default gravity which will be tracked as soon as we begin play now another thing you could set this to be a more dynamic variable uh, i think point one from uh, trials that i've done in the past will work just in general that's roughly what kind of feels good when you're on the wall as having that kind of extra friction you could make this half of whatever the gravity is set to or a tenth of it or whatever you wanted but i think generally point one a hard value here because it's not necessarily related to the overall gravity in the world this is just kind of faking friction we can set that to a kind of magic number here and that's pretty much it so if we play this quickly we can see that there's still one thing which is kind of sticking out to me which is if we are already on the wall and we jump again so this is actually two different problems the first thing is we can only get that one additional jump and the second problem within that is because we're not applying any forward force any forward velocity away from the wall uh, we are still technically 
wall sliding, which means we have set the gravity to 0.1 and we're getting a very slow movement back up the wall again. It looks as though we're floating back up, which is a problem we've mostly solved, but we still have this issue here. Now there are a couple of different ways that we could approach fixing this. We could keep this check in mind. If we jump again, we could reset the gravity or something or stop certain velocities if we're still being tracked as being connected to the wall when the jump button is pressed. But we're going to do a complete overhaul of the jump functionality anyway to make these improvements. Uh, one, to stop this kind of floating movement. And also, like I've mentioned, we're kind of capped at how many times we can jump, even in wall jumping scenarios because of using the default double jump implementation. I think with regards to the actual wall slide setup, this is very good. This is going to be feeling pretty good to interact with. And we would be fixing a problem which is going to be solved in a different way when we get into the next topic, which is improving our jump setup anyway. Hopefully you've enjoyed that content. And just a reminder, if you wanted to get access to the full topics in this mini course, it's already fully available and uploaded over on Skillshare. I'm providing links in the description down below, which will allow you to sign up with a free premium trial. You'll gain full access to all of the courses over on Skillshare, including this 3D platformer focused controller topic. So be sure to check that out if you wanted to take advantage of the offer whilst it lasts. And as always, I just wanted to say a big thank you to all of the people supporting all of the work that I do here on YouTube, allowing me to keep making this weekly content. So a big thank you to all of the names scrolling down the screen.